documentary filmmakers David and Albert Maisels visit a derelict mansion in East Hampton, New York, known as Grey Gardens, a once gorgeous residency now overrun by cats, raccoons, possums and fleas. In a poor state of disrepair, the owners, ex-socialite mother and daughter pairing, often referred to as Big Edie and Little Edie, the aunt and cousin of Jackie Kennedy, their lives within Grey Gardens were a drastic contrast, living apart from the wealth and luxury they had once known, facing risk of eviction and a squandered fortune, as outsiders Big Edie and Little Edie find within their unconventional circumstances a new normal. This is the iconic documentary Grey Gardens, directed by David and Albert Maisel, with co-direction from Ellen Hofder and Mufi Meyer, considered one of the greatest documentaries ever made. The Maisel's observational style allows both Little and Big Edie to be their truest selves, emotionally open from their joys to their heated arguments. The film also captures Edie's strong, infectious personality, which would become an undeniable influence on the landscape of camp culture, often quoted for a sense of humour and demeanour, as well as respected for her outsider fashion sense, which often consisted of using curtains and blankets as garments. And Maisel's filmmaking portraiture approach, established in their earlier works such as Salesman, Meet Marlon Brando and Gimme Shelter, allowed the documentarian brothers to capture the true nature of the Beals within Grey Gardens, often providing no influence on their subjects apart from the presence of the camera, such a presence itself likely a source of motivation for Little Edie's more cabaret-esque performative moments. Often handheld, intimate and personal, the Maisels became acquainted with the Beals a year before filming, the human connection to their subjects abundantly clear during moments in which Edith and Edie speak directly to the Maisels as close friends. During the initial release of Grey Gardens, the film was met with controversy that suggested the film exploited mentally unstable people in front of a voyeuristic camera, despite every effort within the film to humanise its subjects. John Patterson discusses the controversy of Grey Gardens in his article for The Guardian stating that Grey Gardens made quite a splash on its initial release, and not always in a good way. The Maisels were accused of exploiting their subjects and betraying tenets of the direct cinema movement, to which they were deemed to belong, principally by dint of their 1969 masterpiece Salesman, perhaps the pinnacle of the genre. While these controversies arose, Grey Gardens still retained the Maisels' direct cinema origins, with the film's use of portable equipment, small crews as not to overwhelm their subjects, and while Grey Gardens focuses on two specific figures, outsiders who are financially and emotionally vulnerable, the film never belittles them, aiming to capture the reality of the Beals with empathy. Many viewers watching Grey Gardens now will find only respect for the Beals. One of Grey Gardens' most significantly appealing aspects is Little Edie's personality. She's a woman in her 50s, but still closely connected to her inner child and imagination, aspiring for a drastic change in her life far away from Grey Gardens. She is often filled with humour and a kind-hearted nature, respecting the cats and raccoons in the same way she respects the film crew. Her nostalgic reflections on past beauty, wealth, her rejections of wishing to reattain these things, and faltered romances to men she never loved and one man she expresses, in particular, she only ever loved, but that he was rejected by her mother Big Edie, illustrates that Little Edie offers an emotional openness in her every word that is difficult not to admire. There's a sense of relatability amongst the rejection of high society norms that allows Little Edie to become a down-to-earth icon of documentary cinema, a figure who continues to be admired by anyone who shares in her pain, her dashed aspirations of artistry and music, and the effortless inner strength she has in being being able to remain a kind and humorous soul. Even during Little Edie's most heated arguments with her mother, such as the overwhelming resentment between the two over Little Edie's one true love, further soured by Big Edie's brutal remarks about Little Edie making a rotten breakfast. In contrast to these arguments, Little Edie also shares many positive moments with her mother, which illustrates a joy, humour and respect amongst both of them, such as when Little Edie's concerns for her mother's bare back on the camera arise due to Big Edie's back bathing costume. Little Edie feels like the antithesis to Big Edie's often critical and stubborn nature, but the duo both express an unconditional love towards each other, even after the most uncomfortable arguments. There's something to be admired about a relationship like this, in all its emotional honesty. Amongst all the humour, the arguments and the brutality of Big Edie's backhanded compliments towards her daughter, dressed up as a compliment, Big Edie suggests Little Edie could still look like her beauty pageant self, if she put in the 
effort, which in reality is a devastating remark about Little Edie's current appearance. Great Gardens also examines the significantly human subject of the passage of time, as Big Edie and Little Edie share photos of their resplendent past amongst their squalid bedroom, there is a sombre nostalgia, especially when Big Edie expresses disdain at an old photograph of her young self, Little Edie expressing her admiration for her mother's youthful beauty. Viewing these photographs, the Beals are reminded of what once was, and the sadness sinks in regarding what could have been. Any audience viewing Grey Gardens is bound to feel the instant connection to the Beals here, not because we share their upper class experiences, but because we all know the feelings, the nostalgia, the disappointment, and maybe even elation, that comes along with the realisation of how times change. That's something everybody has in common. What becomes admirable with the Beals is how they adapt to the passage of time, finding within the unconventional that which brings them moments of joy, comfort and connection. Roger Ebert, within his review of Grey Gardens, summarised the passage of time and finding joy within their current circumstances even when they hope for change. The house was beautiful once, and so were the Beals. They look through old scrapbooks, this woman of 82 and her 56 year old daughter, and we see them when they were the cream of society. Edith on her wedding day, Edie modelling at a charity fashion show. Now a slow disintegration has set in. Rooms of their mansion and areas of their lives have been closed off. One at a time, left to the forages of raccoons and memories, still they've preserved a few things, while abandoning so much. They still have wit, style and what I would define as sanity. Grey Gardens, one of the most haunting documentaries in a long time, preserves their strange existence and we're pleased that it does. It expands our notions of the possibilities. It's about two classic centrics, two people who refuse to live the way they're supposed to, but by the film's end we see that they live fully in ways of their own choosing. As Ebert suggests, Little Edie and Big Edie are refusing to live the way they're expected to. The upper class expectations of socialite women are rejected as they live the way they do on their own terms. And while there are sombre thoughts over how times have changed in a manner that hasn't benefited the Beals, the duo are carving their own way through life in a way that is surprisingly similar to the rest of us, sharing in the emotional highs and lows of a family relationship that many viewers may recognise, the dashed aspect aspirations, the romantic struggles, the compassion towards family, and the enthusiasm of one's own recreation, with its clear sense of humanity, both Edies retaining their sense of wit. This is how Grey Gardens continues to shine so brightly, as one of the greatest documentaries ever made, a film itself unaffected by the passage of time. In conclusion, Grey Gardens is an undeniable icon of documentary filmmaking, presenting unconventional yet monumental personalities from Little Edie and Big Edie, a rejection of social expectations and a call for empathy for the subjects facing tabloid-driven resentment. Grey Gardens takes us to the heart of this mother-daughter relationship and is bound to leave the audience more emotionally respectful towards the eccentricities of their own families. Intimate, revealing, playful yet heartbreaking, Grey Gardens is essential for any documentary enthusiast. A special thank you to my incredible tier Patreon supporter Gil and to my super tier Patreon supporter Constantin Bombelli. 